Okay. My first guest tonight needs no introduction, so cue the music, please. And they called it puppy love. Oh, and yes, they'll never know. Ladies and gentlemen, direct from Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, please welcome Donny Osmond. <laughs> I just have to say one okay, thing. Do you, do you need me? I, I no, can no, go no, say, I just have to say yes, one thing. I'm yeah. watching the monitor back there. Oh, there you are. You have them. Okay, yeah. when you guys were singing Puppy Love, I was watching the monitor back there. Yeah. The funniest thing about it was these middle-aged men going, and they call it. And then the younger guys, what is this song? <laughs> How are you, everybody? It's nice to be back. I, my entrance to Ireland tonight, i got to tell you about this. Yeah. So a couple hours ago, I flew in from London. Uh, we we're opening up at the O2 in London. So you didn't come quite direct from, from uh, Las Vegas. No, no, no not quite direct. But, so I get, I get to the terminal, and I'm not making this up, this true story. I had to go to the bathroom so badly. So I'm running down the terminal. I see the signs. I see, what is it, M, MNA? Yeah, MNA. Apparently, you guys have a different language here. My, my and I no, see the no. M, and I'm thinking, men? Oh, no. I run into the ladies, into the ladies room. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the 70s, you with know. With a blemish-free career. Oh, 50 man. years without gone, any kind of a gone. scandal, and suddenly you're a sex gone. pest in, in the women's toilets. Tomorrow in the headlines, is Donny Osmond really a woman? You know, so, <laughs> yeah. but it was uh, my... Donny with, with an eye. With an eye, that's it. So, so do you get this kind of a welcome everywhere you go? When you walk into a room, the women go... Because the women around here tonight, there's kind of mothers of guests and women of all ages, really, the young ones as well. They're all a little bit different. They're a little bit funny. In what Donnie's way, in, Because Donnie's in the building. I don't know. I don't want to use the word horny as such, but they're, <laughs> they're, they're different. It's something they're, I've never seen in women before, Really? Yeah, You've so never it, seen them that way? It's a strange one to me. No, okay. no, I've yes. never seen them. You've never seen a woman that way? I'm sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Far from my wife, obviously. Uh, like right, like right. yourself. Exactly. Because you never, you never really indulged either, did you? You've been 50 years of women throwing themselves at you, really. But you, it was never something you got involved in, was it? No, it's not like I didn't want to, though. But uh, no, I've married to the same woman for 35 years, you guys. You met her when you were... I was 16 when I met her. She was barely 15. Married her when I was 20. And uh, I mean, we dated. We had a date secretly because of all the fan magazines that were taking pictures and stuff. So we, we dated three and a half years secretly. Okay. Yeah. And because of the of the Mormon thing and everything, was that one of the reasons why you would have got married young and stayed married and never? Yeah, we normally marry at fourteen in the Mormon thing. <laughs> <laughs> No, that had nothing to do with it. Nothing yeah. to do. No, no. She's one of twenty-seven wives that I've got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you? I'm kidding, everybody. <laughs> Can I say you look for a guy who's been in show business fifty years? You look absolutely amazing, Thank doesn't you. you? Thank absolutely you. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, if you saw the show that we're by the way we're bringing the show here. When is it? The thirty-first to the O2 Arena here. Yeah, the 30th uh, to Belfast at the Odyssey. Uh -huh. When you see this show and you see all the dancing and, and everything we do, you understand why. So it keeps, keeps, it keeps me in shape. And that's you and your sister, Marie, yeah. together. Yeah. Now, I wonder about that, right? I love my sister, okay? I have only yeah. one sister, I love her. And She's you love my sister as well? I love her for about two days at Christmas, and mm -hmm. I love her for maybe a week in the summer as well. And then apart from that, we stay out of each other's way largely. Right. I'm imagining that I wouldn't like to be getting up dancing with her every night do you get on each other's nerves it's all the time really <laughs> no it's it's just like everybody else i really respects me we're very much professionals of what we do we've we've worked together for so many years mm -hmm. but yeah you know we get on each other's nerves every once in a while but when the show has to get put on you put the show on mm -hmm. there's something about that relationship with marie it just works on stage because we've worked together for so many years. You have for so If long. something goes awry, if something goes wrong on stage, we know exactly what we're going to do. So it's practically telepathy, it's telepathy between the two at that point, yeah. And, and tell me, what, uh, you do the show, obviously, you do all the songs from down the years and everything and a lot more stuff and from 
your time in musical theatre and all that as well, yeah. I presume. What are the highlights for people? What crazy are the horses. Yeah. Crazy. I love doing crazy horses because yeah. I, I brought, I bring all the smoke and all the special effects, all the dancers. I mean, the place absolutely goes crazy. It's interesting because when people don't really know what to expect today, Donnie and Marie show, they think it's going to be really cute. Let's all have an insulin shot after the show. <laughs> um, I, I love to see how they're surprised when they see like songs like Crazy Horses, Soldier of Love. Uh, all those kinds of things. That you can just, rock out a bit. It just well. rocks the place out like crazy. And Crazy Horses is going to have a whole new resonance in, in Ireland when you do it here now. Because you, Why? You, you may not be aware of this, but. Oh, they have the burger! Yes, 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 yes. The burger! Yes. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, we're all, we're all crazy. Maybe, horses now, baby. maybe I should dress up uh, like a cow or something. You like should that. dress up like a half a cow, horse. Half or horse. A, yeah. a cow that's 29% horse. Yeah. I can't, I can't believe, I just learned that tonight before the show went on. I can't yeah, believe yeah. that happened. Yeah, yeah, but it, 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 there's, no, there's no harm in the burgers or no. anything, okay? But I feel like jumping over these hedges all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, maybe you should see your You, rest, should, you should see my stage <laughs> show. I'm mean, jumping all over the place. Okay, tell, tell us about a few of the other highlights. I wanted to talk about what, what are the songs people love? Well, obviously, I got to do Puppy Love, yeah. but I found footage Give of Give us a blast of Puppy Love there, how it's And they done. called it Puppy Love. Oh, I... Yes, Sir, stop singing the song, please. <laughs> so. But I found footage of me when I was 14 years old yeah. singing Puppy Love. So I got me at 14 years old and the huge screens behind me singing it like 40 some odd years later. So it's really kind of cool. Yeah. Do you love still me for love to sing that song or are you like, oh God, my Puppy Brandon Love? and I went through a time when I hated it. You yeah. know, I just needed to get away from it because it was the very thing that was keeping me back and progressing from being an adult performer. And Justin Bieber's gonna go through the same thing. Baby, 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 oh my, I'm sure he hates that song. Yeah. Like everybody else, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure 30, 40 years from now, he's, hopefully he's gonna embrace it, just like I've embraced Puppy Love. I sing Puppy Love now and I enjoy it, because come on, it was a great time of my life. Yeah, it was really, it? Yeah. And it was a because great song. Because it's difficult being a child star, isn't it? And it's difficult to adjust. No, it's not afterwards. being difficult being a child star. That's the fun part. Uh -huh. The hard part is getting out of that when you grow older and everybody thinks you're still a child star. You know, you grow up too. My 20s were the worst decade of my life because everybody still thought I was 16 years old. Really, yeah. And then Soldier of Love came out in 1989 and just... That's what and you actually, that had to be put out originally as a mystery artist just because it was such a kind of a well, every, stigma all, attached all the radio Donny stations Osmond. were afraid to say that they were playing Donny Osmond's music because they, they, they were afraid of the image. Mm. But they were doing me a favor because they let the, the music speak for itself. So mm -hmm. the music hit and then they realized, you mean that's Donny Osmond? So, and so I did a whole new arrangement of Soldier of Love for this show. It's just amazing. Okay, so, excellent. And, and you know that, that, that thing about making that transition and everything? Something I never knew, which I was interested in, is that because you had a lot in common with him, I guess, you and Michael Jackson became quite friendly. I guess at that period when you were kind of heading into adolescence and yes. you were both trying to adjust to being adults, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he and I were pretty close. Uh, when we lost him, it really, really hurt. Because we had this, this really interesting relationship. He told me this. He said, you know, you're, you're the only person on the planet that really understands what I've been through and what I'm going through now. And obviously he left me in the dust and went to superstardom. But back when we were 13 years old, yeah. um, we really could relate to one another. The comparisons are pretty interesting, Brendan. We both have nine children in the family. Both Mike and I were seventh child of nine. Our mother's birthdays, same day. My mother played saxophone. Uh, his mother played clarinet. And we would discuss all these similarities over and over and over again. As a matter of fact, this is interesting. Do you mm. remember his song, Ben, the two of us, we look no more? That was my song. No way, that was supposed to be for you originally. That was written for me. I met the writer. And you sing ago. it quite well. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I would have loved to hear, sing My or hear, heard Michael sing Puppy Love. Can you imagine? And they called it <laughs> Puppy Love. <laughs> but you, no, really, it was written for me. Yeah. And the writer told me, he said, we had to finish the movie, and you were out on tour, so we just got Michael to sing it, and so that was Michael's first number one solo record, and One Bad Apple, my first number one record with my brothers, uh -huh. was written for the Jackson 5, and we got it first. Wow, right. Yeah, a little bit of trivia. I guess you're glad you didn't get Ben, and things didn't go the way they went for Michael, though, in a way, yeah? Well, 
uh, some choices were made in his life, and it really hurts me because he was. Do such you think a it was it because friend. of that childhood, the child, the similar childhood to you had? Could you see how it could mess a person up? I can see how it can mess a person up, but still, you make choices in life, Brandon. Um, I really had some wonderful parents. I'm not putting his parents down, whatever, but my parents really didn't live an ostentatious life. They really kept us grounded as much as possible. But still, even with that, you are faced with a lot of interesting decisions when you've, you've got the world at your feet, mm -hmm. you've got screaming girls after you all the time, and this is what's tough, making this transition. You're going from a concert where it's just screaming like crazy, and you go to an empty hotel room that is just silent. That can drive anybody crazy. Yeah. And it did me. I mean, well, I went through some hard times. Then, you know? Yeah, I'm a Mormon. The only thing I could drink was water, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So you're sitting there drinking water, yeah. trying to come down, thinking, yeah. yeah. But I, I really hurt for him when, when all that went down. And you had stayed in touch with him? I did, I did, I did. Yeah. Through the hard times, he would call me and just said, Donnie, help, you know, help me. Someone help me, help me. Oh. No, don't sing it. Okay. okay. But it, you know, it was really hard for me to watch him go through that. But um, it's really sad. Yeah. But I, I really felt for him because I knew what he was going through. And you had your own difficulties in a sense, didn't you? A few years back, you kind of got, w w would you have called it a kind of a breakdown, what you had? Or, yeah. Yeah. And uh, tell us about that. Well, I was doing a musical, Joseph and the Amazing Technical Drinko. And I had lost my career. Everything was gone. Couldn't get arrested on the charts. So finally I do this musical in, in 92, and it just goes like crazy. It takes off. And you can get, you can't even get a ticket. Standing room only. And what I went through, Brennan, was that I better not make a mistake because I'm going to lose it. And I know what it feels like to lose a career. So I had to be perfect okay. in every performance, and it threw me into panic attacks. So that was my breakdown. Mm -hmm. And so I had to get over all of that. And it, it was really, really tough. But thank goodness. I got a handle on that because I couldn't go on stage. And for an entertainer, <laughs> that yeah. doesn't work very well, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you were getting the chance again but and you knew now, how elusive it was. I love getting out on stage. I love getting out there, get the audience going, and, yeah. and, and, and even singing Puppy Love to Crazy Horses. I thoroughly love it. And do me, do me one favor before yeah. you go, Donnie, because you, you're, you've been responsible for a lot of things down the years, probably things you don't even know you're responsible for, right? Yeah. There was a boy band from, from Ireland. Boy Zone. Boy Zone. Heard? Love me for a reason. Love me for a reason, which yeah. was, I think, what, what really captured Girl, when you hold me, how you control me, you bend and you fold me, any way you please. Such a great song. Yeah, go on. It must be easy for you, the loving things that you do. But, yo, oh, I'm singing this song while I'm looking at you. That doesn't feel yeah. <laughs> I feel... Donnie you just ruined the entire song. <laughs> now, but, but now but, I know but what that your expression face, on the women's face was. But your now face, when I was singing it to you, was what was killing me. It was like, yeah. I've uh, I've never felt quite like this before. I <laughs> Donnie, I think we should stop before this goes too far. It's not too pleasant to have you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Donnie Osmond. Thank you. Now. Donnie, Donnie's going to hang on and give his hand. I want to give something away to a member of our studio audience, okay? It comes from boilsports.com, Ireland's leading independent bookmakers with 180 shops across Ireland. To mark their continued sponsorship of the boilsports.com hurdle at Leperstown next Saturday, they've given us a treat for one of you people in the audience. So, Donnie, will you give me a hand I would love this? to. Okay, so if Donnie, if you go over to, to this that, camera that here, camera there, that's Mick on the camera. Get out of um, my way. Will you get out okay. of my way? So, Danny, we want, to, we want to pick somebody from the audience to win the prize. Obviously, you don't know anyone, so why don't, have a look around. Okay. Do you want to kind of maybe encourage him to... No, not, not him. Okay, take a good so, look around first, so Danny. So, do we want male or female? And, okay, okay, we got some. We have a winner. What's your name, sir? Olivier. 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 Okay, very good. You picked the one French man in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Olivier, of course, French people love horse, don't you? You, you? you eat them, you ride them, everything. Okay, well, congratulations, Olivier. You have just won a VIP trip for two to the races next Saturday. <laughs> 
Uh, the prize includes overnight accommodation at the Clyde Court Hotel in Balls Bridge, dinner, transfers to the races, and including those VIP tickets, plus hospitality, and lots, lots more. And I presume you're bringing this lovely lady here with you? Yes. Is that right? What's your name? Julia. Julia. Okay, well, look after him, will you? Make sure, you, make sure he doesn't... Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thanks. Am I, I done? The rest of you feel... Sorry. Am I done? I'm leaving Donny Osmond standing around. Ladies and gentlemen, Donny Osmond. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Are the rest of you all feeling a bit jealous about Olivier? Yes. Okay, then there's a pair of tickets to the races for everyone in the yes. audience. Yes. Give it up again, please, ladies and gentlemen, for Donny Osmond. Thank you very much. And you can see Donny and Marie at the Odyssey Arena in Belfast on the 30th of January and at the O2 in Dublin on the 31st.